Come in. Dr. Sloan? Yes? I'm sorry to disturb you, sir, but it's urgent. Well, what's wrong? There's a sick man in drawing room B, and his wife's half out of her mind. I wonder if you take a look at him, sir. What does he complain of? I don't know, sir, but he sure sounds bad, and I'd appreciate it if you'd... All right, I'll be with you in a minute. You are a medical doctor, aren't you, sir? Yes, I'm afraid so. There are times when I wish I were a veterinarian. Well, Doctor, what is it? He'll be all right. Can I go to him now? Yes, maybe you'd better stay with him. I'll be right back and give him something to relieve the pain. Thank you. Is it serious, Doctor? Symptoms point to polio. Polio? Unless we work fast, we may be in for a lot of complications. But what can we do? We must get him to a hospital as soon as possible. What's the next stop? A Phoenix, sir, 4 a.m. Three and a half hours. Uh, too far, too late. No, I can't take that much of a chance. Well, sir, I don't... Wait a minute. We go through Winston, don't we? Yes, sir. When? In about an hour, but we don't stop there. Well, we will tonight. There's a hospital in Winston, small but well equipped. All right. Now, here's what has to be done. Notify the engineer and then wire ahead to the station master at Winston to have an ambulance meet the train. We've got to work fast. Above all, stay calm. Keep this to ourselves. Is it contagious, sir? Yes, this car will have to be quarantined until I get him off at Winston. And then you must seal up the compartment. No one need know anything about it. What cars are ahead of this one? The baggage car. Well, that simplifies things. Porter, I want you to stay in the car behind this and make absolutely sure that no one enters or leaves this one. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Get on it right away. We're getting close to Desert Junction. I better get that wire ready for the dispatcher. There's one more thing. I'm going to need a hypodermic and some drugs for my suitcase. It's been checked through. You'll have to let me into the baggage car first. Of course. Follow me. Thank you. Hiya, Bill. What's up? This is Dr. Sloan. A passenger took sick suddenly. He needs some medicine from his suitcase, okay? Thank you. This gentleman's a doctor, Eddie. Yeah? There's a guy sick in back. Get the doc's bag and make it snappy. You got a baggage check? Oh, yes. Here it is. This guy bad off? Yeah, he'll be all right. Yeah? What's wrong with him? I'm not sure. Sometimes they eat too much. When the train rolls at night. Hurry up, will you, Eddie? Okay, okay. Right up here, please. Take it easy. There's glass in there. Is that okay? Yes, thank you. That's fine. That what you need, Doc? Put up your hands, please. Up! Unbuckle your gun belt. Drop it. Now move over to the door. Lay on the floor, face down. Hurry up. Put your hands behind your back. Shut 
Come here. Mother me. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I thought it would help you sleep. I'm too excited. Yeah, me too. What time is it? You don't have to whisper. <laughs> I always whisper in the dark. Is it time to get up? No, it's too early. Go back to bed. Oh, I'll sleep on the plane. You're a nice Mr. Norman. By this time, tomorrow will be in Mexico City. I know how you feel. Ah, oh, it'll be wonderful. Mexico City, Taxco, Puebla. Sosh. Sosh. Sashimilko. <laughs> okay. So you pronounce it better than I do. It's easy, Sashimilko. That's where the streets are paved with flowers. And they use boats for taxis. You know that Mexican song you brought home yesterday? I can't get it out of my mind. Salute Felicidad Amor. Means health, happiness, and love. If you got those and money, you're not entitled to gripe. We have them, darling. Yep. But not in the right proportions. If we lack in money, I'll make up in the love department. Hello, Norman speaking. What? In 15 minutes, but... Hendrix. Hendrix? He'll be over in 15 minutes. Why? What's happened? I don't know, but it's not a social call. Well, didn't he tell you? No, he didn't say. Well, he must have told you something. He didn't tell me anything. We'll know when he gets here. 
Well, until they reached Phoenix at 4 a.m., they didn't even know anything was wrong. They couldn't get in the baggage car. They had to bust their way in. Some more coffee, Mr. Hendricks? Oh, thanks. Don't mind if I do. That's when they found them, unconscious. Safe, blown wide open. How much did they get, Sam? Everything but the silver. A half a million. $500,000 in small notes. Well, I guess that about covers it. Let's get out the airport. Now, oh, wait a minute. You've ruined my vacation. At least let me finish my coffee. Oh, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> we did count on this vacation. Charlie's been tired lately and edgy. I know, I know. I've set all your plans. But this calls for top handling. What about Jackson? Not enough experience. Navia, Jerry Klein, Rogers? For phony accident claims, routine investigation, yes. But for this... I guess I'm it. Now, look, Charlie, this is our biggest policy. We're out in a limb for half a million. You retrieve it, and maybe the company will buy you a Mexican holiday. Who's coming for the railroad? Joe Armstrong. He's gone on ahead to Phoenix. He's a friend of yours, isn't he? He usually has Sunday dinner with us. Every once in a while, we run after the same fires. Good. And you work as a team. Come on, come on. We're late. I'll be right with you. Baby, I'm sorry I blew up at you. I know how much the vacation meant to you. To me, too. Huh. It's only postponed. We'll get there. Sure, we will. Take care. Yeah, I'll check it. Still at it, Joe. Can't you remember anything? What you write down, you can see. What you see, you can remember. How are you, Charlie? Okay. A little sleepy. You'll wake up. Yeah, if I save the company half a million bucks, I get a week in Mexico on the house. <laughs> You're lucky. All I get is polish from a badge. How's Ruth? She's okay. Hi, Charlie. Hello, Pete. Your baby? Yep. How do you like the look of it? It is how we found it. Neat job. Yeah. Technique and precision. A real pro. Blew her open like a penny balloon. Liquid nitro? No. What did they use? Shape charge? Yeah. That's a new one. Shape charge, the stuff the Army's been fooling around with. That's it. Well, how's it work? Well, in simple terms, it's an explosive molded into the shape of a cone so that the force of the explosion is directed. Like a blowtorch. Oh, I get it. In other words, they just blew out that hinge in the lock, eh? But, uh, how'd they set it off? Well, either an electric battery or a detonator, we found pieces of wire. What's this? Muffler, probably. It's just a bed pad. We'll know more when we get it down to the lab. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's where they found them. Dead to the world. We're ready to go with the witnesses. You want to question them now? Oh, sure. Where are they? In the other car. Okay, Charlie. Let's go. Well, I knew he was a doctor on account of the telegram. Well, I... I guess he just looked like... anybody. You know, kind of, uh, average. It was just like a sting, all of a sudden, here. We had a baggage check. I, I found a suitcase right away. Yes, sir. I'm positive she was a blonde. A blonde? That tells us a lot. Anything? Nothing. No prints, nothing. Brand new bed pad, never been washed. You can buy those in any store. Wires, just wires. Dime store stuff. Everything wiped clean. Well, they don't seem to overlook the thing. There's got to be something. There always is. Sure. You know where to look for it. Winston, let's check on that ambulance. The ambulance men were playing cards, you know, just killing time. About 12.30, these two guys come in armed. Mm -hmm. They work fast and quiet. Up with your hands and turn to the wall. 
Then they conks him on the head. Uh, Petey, send Bill out to get some cold lemonade, will you? Right, Jack. Like a well-rehearsed troop of actors, they thought of everything. No chance of a slip-up. The wire came, they had the ambulance, and they were ready. Wasn't that a long shot? Couldn't the station master have called direct to the hospital for an ambulance? Well, it wouldn't have made any difference, Joe. I checked, there isn't another ambulance within 65 miles of here. Yeah. Someone masterminded this pretty carefully. They case this town inside or not. Maybe we can get a lead that way. Oh, I doubt it. There are too many tourists in Winston this time of the year. They all ask questions. A couple more nosing around wouldn't cause much of a stir. How about the missing ambulance? Not so much as a nibble so far. Every department in the state's looking for it. Got roadblocks, posses. Even got a helicopter from Phoenix. They wouldn't get very far with an ambulance on the main highway. That's right, they couldn't. They would attract too much attention. That's what I told them. I said they wouldn't go far in that ambulance. They'd ditch it and ditch it close. I'll bet it's not far from town. It'll show up. It better. There isn't much else we can do until it does. There sure is. What? We can eat. <laughs> See you, Jack. So long. What's the matter with you? Nerves, I guess. Take it easy, kid. We haven't even started yet. Ben? In this hole for hours and haven't figured an escape hatch yet. Here's something to occupy your mind. Listen to this. Porter delivers wire to compartment B, 9.50 p.m. Woman calls conductor, 12.30 a.m. Wire dispatched to Winston, 12.55 a.m. In Winston, 12.30 a.m. Ambulance men knocked out. Sometime between 12.30 a.m. and 1.30, robbery occurs. Train pulls into Winston, 1.40. Ambulance waiting. 1.50 a.m., ambulance drives off. It's open. Train pulls out. <laughs> Reads like a freight dispatcher's timetable. Everything in place, no loose ends, no leads so far. Sounds like the beginning of a perfect crime. <laughs> Must have been something to watch. Save your admiration, Charlie. I've been a cop for a long time. I've seen some good jobs and bad jobs, but I've never seen a perfect one. Well, that's always a first time, Joe. No, no, there's no such thing as a perfect crime. Just a lucky one. But their luck will run out. Well, it's not going to run out tonight. I think I'll go back to the hotel and call Ruth, tell her we're going to be stuck here for a while. Okay. Take that wheat toast. Right. Be with you in a minute. Wheat toast and two coffees, Jimmy. Coffee? No. Where you been? Checking the ambulance reports as they came in. And? A highway patrol helicopter spotted 20 miles out of town. I told you. The first break. Maybe the luck's beginning to run out. Right. Finish the coffee. Let's get out there. Brother! What a good night's sleep can do. We're wasting time. Well, maybe they slipped. They've been too careful. Let's forget about the ambulance and find out where they went. I've been trying to find out. It's not where they went that's bothering me. It's how. One thing's for sure, they didn't drive. Well, how do you know? The ground, it's too dry. Dry as powder. No other tracks, just the ambulance. Yeah, but how? Maybe there's your answer, Joe. Anything? Blood, and plenty of it. See what I mean, Charlie? The luck's beginning to run out. Why is it so much hotter here in Riverside than L.A.? What do you make of the blood? Don't know. Nobody was hurt in the robbery. 
Maybe somebody was too greedy. Could have been an accident. Maybe. But it doesn't matter either way. What do you mean by that? It's only important who was hurt or how. The important thing is it wasn't on the timetable. And that's what's going to trap them, Charlie. Everything was too well-timed. No leeway. And if they went off schedule once... Just once. Copter belonged to a guy named Al Wolf. He runs a charter service in Burbank. Mm, Peter. I doubt it. What? He reported it missing four weeks ago. Oh. Well, let's go have a talk with him anyway. We may get something. Yeah. Free ride around the airport. around? Yeah, he's around. Will you get him for us? Yeah, sure. Hey, Wolfie! Yep! Hi. How many planes can I sell you guys? We're checking on the guy who chartered your copter about four weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like I told the CAA. Uh, guy looked perfectly all right. He had a license, a legit reason, and cash, lots of cash. <laughs> How was I supposed to know he's a phony? You know, times ain't so good right now. Hundred buck a day jobs don't come along every day in the week. The reason he gave you, what was it? He said he was flying up to Nevada. Something to do with uranium. He was gonna look over a claim, I think, he said. And you believed him? Look, buddy, I told you, he had a lot of cash, paid me for six days. He could have said he was going to the moon. <laughs> Remember what he looked like? Sure, sure, he was a nice-looking guy. Uh, very pleasant personality. That all you can remember? Well, he was a big guy, and uh, like I said, a very pleasant personality. <laughs> Who'd have thought he was a phony? Thank you very much, Mr. Wolf. We'll be in touch with you. Hey, but uh, what about my copter? Sorry, but we'll have to hang on to it for a while. It's been impounded as evidence, but we'll get it back to you as soon as possible. Look, I need it now. I can rent it to a movie company. They're making a flying picture. I'm trying to make a western. Are you sure you don't want to lie down for a while, honey? You look beat. Well, if I've already told you, I've got work to do. If I lie down, it piles up. I'll get buried under it. But it can wait for an hour, can't it? Darling, you shouldn't drive yourself like this. It isn't worth it. You've just got to relax. Got to relax. Let me rub your forehead. Let me get your slippers. Ruthie, what do you know about this? Why don't you just leave me alone? But you mustn't fly off like that. All right, so I won't fly off. You won't make anything happen sooner by beating yourself. You know what Joe says. You've just got to have patience. Yeah, I know what Joe says. And patience is fine for a guy like Joe. It goes with his two-pants suit, his washable necktie, and his 49 car. For me, patience is poison. Charlie, can't I help? What could you do? You've never tested me, Charlie. Well, let's not begin now. Hello? I'll be there in a half hour. I'm sorry, baby, I gotta go. Charlie! What went wrong? What happened? Who got hurt? Charlie, please. Which one? Lumbar. How? His own gun tripped getting in the plane. Stupid when... fool, the getaway was timed. Moving fast, Charlie, it was an accident. An accident. 
We don't want any more accidents. What was he carrying a gun for? All he had to do was play sick and lie on a stretcher. He had an idea that... I had a timetable. For months, I studied the east and the westbound trains. I, I rode the coaches like a candy butcher. I memorized the baggage car. I studied the crew movements, the compartment layout. I rehearsed every move with you and Paul over and over and over. What could we do? He had to stay with Lombard. We couldn't just let him die. You wouldn't have wanted that, would you? Would you, Charlie? No, of course not. How bad is he? Not good. Let me have it straight. Will Lombard pull through? Well, Paul keeps telling us... Paul taking care of him now? Yes, he's doing everything he can. Paul's still a good doctor, Charlie. As good as when I married him. He hasn't had a drink in four days. You better not. Where are they? In Chatsworth. Wolf took us to a place. Wolf. He has it. You're full of surprises, aren't you? Wolf's part in the job was over when he landed that helicopter. I told Paul to pay everyone off and split up. Oh, he had to go somewhere. So Wolf steps into the picture. Wolf doesn't know about you. He still thinks Paul planned it. I still don't like it. Now the Wolf knows we all run a risk. What else could we do? Why did you switch the schedule? You were supposed to be in Mexico City. What are you doing here? You're the mastermind. Shut up, Linda. You had every minute ticked off for each of us. You followed your own timetable. You'd have been there. I'm telling you to shut up. Well, why didn't you leave? Why didn't you carry out your end? I couldn't, you little fool. I couldn't. You mean you wouldn't? You thought Paul and I double-crossed you, didn't you? Didn't you? I'm on the case, Linda. The company assigned me to recover the money. I could roll with that one. I thought you were in Mexico City, but when I called the hotel from Winston, you weren't there either. I nearly went out of my mind. I didn't know what had gone wrong. All I knew was I had to get them back to L.A. if I had to lead them here by the hand. We found the plane. The blood. I nearly went crazy. Whose blood? Which one? It could have been yours. Frightened. There's nothing to be frightened of. What I know I can handle. Are you sure? I'm positive. There's nothing to be frightened of. Aren't you ever afraid? Why should I be? My job is to catch myself. From here on, I control everything. I know what they're looking for. I can stop them from finding it. Sometimes you scare me. There's nothing to be frightened of, Linda. It just takes more time. That's what going off schedule means. More time. Till they run themselves ragged and give up. But what about Paul? Maybe he won't want to wait. What does it matter what he wants? I'll do what I tell him. He has the money. Tell him I want to see him tomorrow here with the money. Here? All right, Linda. There's nothing to be frightened of. Charlie, I'm... I love you, Linda. Time. I had to be careful. I wasn't sure this was a place. And I heard the music. Little Linda's favorite song. Health, happiness. The money? So, uh. The key. Yeah. Very nice. Yours? No, it belongs to a friend of mine. What about Lombard? How is he? Dead. Your friend isn't an enemy of alcohol, is he? Lombard didn't have a chance. I did everything I could, Charlie, short of transfusions, wonder drugs, and prayer. I was a very good surgeon, you know, until... What about that drink, huh? Don't worry, Charlie. He knows what he's doing. A very good amateur undertaker. Very expensive, too. That was a funeral that wouldn't wait. He wanted Lombard's share for doing the job. Did you give it to him? Sure, why not? What's $15,000? There's plenty to go around. What about the Ammons boys? Pay them off, too? Oh, yes. First night. They're out of the country by now. Just as you planned. 
You did a great job, Paul. The only lead was the copter. I planned on that. Armstrong swallowed Wolf's story whole. Armstrong? Railroad's prize cop. We're a team. Oh, yeah. Linda told me about that. Has great possibilities for a man with iron nerve. <laughs> Poor Wolf. If he knew who you really are, he swallowed you for a cop. They'll be too amused. I gotta be head and tail on the same coin. It means changing our plans. Our plans? I hardly see, Charlie, how your personal complications affect me. I was in this for one thing, the money. Now I've got it, and I intend to enjoy it. Just how are you thinking of doing that? Going to Mexico. Just like you planned. We won't go together, that's all. You'd get. You're a fool, Paul. Well, Charlie, I only meant to... I know what you meant. Don't even think of it. We lost our chance for a quick getaway. Lombard's bungling fixed that. It's too late now, do you understand? I could make it, Charlie. I know I could. Without anybody to give you orders? There'd be a cop every two feet. You couldn't slip a bag of popcorn past them. They'd pick you up in five minutes. What are we going to do? Charlie, what do you want us to do? Hold up and wait. We got all the time in the world. When can we go? When I tell you and how I tell you. Paul, you're great. You're just great as long as you're following orders. But the next time you get an original idea, remember when we first ran into each other. You were trying to beat the company with a claim that any ten-year-old kid could have seen through. Yes, I, I remember, Charlie. You pulled me out of that hole. I suppose you can pull us out of this one. What's next? Get clear of Wolf's place and Wolf. Move into a motel. Don't spend more than one night. Keep moving south. Check with me every day. Let me know where you are. And wait. Well, get started. Don't you want to counter? I trust you, Paul. Sure you do. We trust each other. I'll have to tell Linda to be more careful with her lipsticks. Or will you tell her? And she said that she'd talk to you on the phone. <laughs> Women. Oh, by the way, Charlie, you wouldn't have liked her blonde. Very unexciting. Joe, you run out of notebooks? What you can see, you can remember. My old man taught me this trick. What was he, a football coach? <laughs> no, just a cracker barrel philosopher and sheriff of Haynesburg, Missouri. When he was on a case, he'd write everything down on a blackboard. Ever solve anything that way? <laughs> Never missed one. He'd sit in front of it for hours, studying the cold facts. When they'd sunk in, he'd erase them. Then he'd start thinking about people. That's okay if you know who you're thinking about. But this isn't a case of who stole Farmer Brown's cow. What's the doctor for? Nothing's turned up on any stolen medical supplies. No illegal drug sales. Anyway, that guy knew what he was doing when he came to giving a hypo. Just a possibility, that's all. A lot of doctors in the country, Joe. Yeah, I know. You planning on checking all of them? If I have to. What happens when you get to the end of that line? What about all the retired medics? And those that have been barred from practice? Look... We'll be checking a lot of things within the next few weeks. Most of it won't mean much, but every now and then something may jive. When it does, we'll write it down. Keep your eye on that blackboard, Charlie. When we erase the facts, we've got our case. I get it, Ruthie.
Norman speaking. Oh, Charlie. Joe, can you meet me downtown? Lincoln Heights Station. Yeah, what for? I think we got the bum who drove the car from Riverside. Okay. Give me a cigarette, will you, Jim? Thanks. Let's try it again, Frankie. Oh, give me a break, will you? I drove a car, that's all. I didn't have anything to do with the robbery. I didn't even know there was a robbery until I read it in the papers. Stop picking long shots, Frankie. Your luck ran out. He's here. Okay. It's true. You've got to believe me. Some guy came up to me. What guy? I don't know his name. Just a guy. He said he'd seen me hanging around L.A. looking for a hungry buck. Wanted to know if I'd like to make some quick dough. And you said sure. What else could I say? Hey, I was down to eating beans. All they wanted me to do was send a wire to some character on the train and then drive a car out to a field in Riverside. That's all. A perfectly honest job. I thought it was legitimate. What did he say he'd pay you? Huh? Dollar an hour? What did he pay you? Five thousand dollars. It's quite a day's pay. Go on. I did it. I was in that field when he told me to be. Could have knocked me over when that copter came in. They tell you what they'd been up to? No. Honest, they are. Honest, no. See, nobody said anything. All the way into San Badu. Nobody said nothing. Only this guy moaning and bleeding. Nobody said anything. It gave me the creeps. Come on, Frankie. That's a long drive. I just told you. Nobody said nothing. There was just this guy and... What was it, Frankie? What did you just remember? Well, it was his dame, see? What about the dame? Well, this guy's moaning must have gotten on her nerves because she said a couple of things to one of the guys shut her up. What'd she say? I don't know. See, it sounded kind of foreign, like, uh... uh nom Breeze, or... Uh, nom, was Nom something. Nom de Dios. How's that sound? Yeah, that's it. Anything else you can remember? No, nothing. That's all there was. See, I drove the car back to San Badu. The guy paid me off. He told me to square. Who paid you? Sheesh. I don't know. It was dark. I couldn't see anything. I hung around San Badu a couple of days, and then I got restless. See, I'm always getting restless moving around. Will you come in, please? All right. Ever seen this man before, Frankie? Recognize him? Take your time. No. Is that all? That's all, Mr. Wolf. Thanks for coming down. Like word with you if you don't mind. Why don't you guys leave me alone? I don't like people busting in here, cops or no cops. I'm not a cop, I'm an insurance investigator. Well, I don't need any, mister.
Cozy place you've got here. Uh, do you mind? I'm superstitious. You know, if I thought you were going to case my couch, I'd have uh, had soft lights and sweet music. No. No, I'd just like you to answer a couple of questions. Now, look, mister. Why don't you go back to your insurance boss and tell him that you drew a blank? I already told you and another guy, the, the cop, everything I know. I'm fresh out of answers. Maybe you aren't, maybe you aren't. What does that mean? Frankie Page, he seemed to know you. But it turned out he didn't, after all. You were there. Yeah. A couple of nights in jail, though, may refresh his memory. All right. You got something on your mind. What is it? Did you kill Harry Lombard? No. When's the last time you saw him? Three years ago. You're lying, Wolf. Did you ever see Frankie Page before? No. Wolf, you're too sharp a poker player to run a bluff in a game like this. What's that supposed to mean? Frankie Page, you may remember. He may talk. It could mean 20 years. Count him, Wolf, 20. Lay off me, will you? You kill Harry Lombard and bury his body in Chatsworth? Leave me alone. You own a ranch in Chatsworth, don't you? Is it a crime to own real estate? No. Just so long as you don't use it as a private cemetery. I told you, I don't own nothing. Not even Paul Bruckner? No. No! Come clean, Wolf. You've been tailed since the first day of this case. Every move, every phone call, everybody you saw. Why'd you kill Harry Lombard? I didn't kill him. It was an accident. His gun went off and then Bruckner... Oh, he... you do know Bruckner. You. You and Bruckner, you planned this whole thing, didn't you? No. No, it was Bruckner. He just came to me and asked me if I wanted to make some dough. How do you know you weren't Simon Pure? Well, somebody told him I used to fly wetbacks up from Mexico. Who told him? I don't know. Maybe his dame. I don't know. It was a long time ago. I, I just thought I was going to pick up some wetbacks near Winston. I, I don't know nothing about no robbery. The DA wouldn't buy that if you were blind drunk, Wolf. 20 years. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. I, I was in on it. I, I knew what I was doing, but, but I didn't plan it. It was Bruckner. Bruckner was the brains. He set it up. That's who you were protecting? Sure. Sure. But no more. You lead us to him? What's in it for me? Wolf, there's a time to wheel and a time to deal. This isn't your time. They ran out on me. Him and his wife. They got all the dough. I didn't get nothing. A couple of grand. Nothing. You know where they are now? Yeah, I know where they are. They were staying at my place in Chatsworth, and they left sudden, so I followed them. They're at a motel in Culver City. I'll write down the address for you. You're remembering better all the time. Something else you don't know. That dame ain't no blonde. Go on. And uh, Bruckner... Bruckner took a bum rack as a medic. This gets better all the time. And you will talk to the DA. Why not? They ran out on me, didn't they? Sure, I'll talk. I'll tell them everything. That's what I had to find out.
Papers are giving us a bad time. Have you read this one? Yeah, I, uh, I read it over a cold cup of coffee. That isn't all that's cold. We've got a dead-end case. It's too bad. Wolf would have broken sooner or later. <laughs> he broke all right, right down the middle. Yeah. No, thanks. I never thought he was the type. In fact, I still don't. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? You saw him, he was cocky, a tough little guy. You'd never figure him to do the Dutch. Maybe he wasn't as tough as we figured. Yeah. Wolf had $65,000 buried in that hangar. You'd have thought he'd have had one big fling. Not shoot himself in a crummy room. Well, you never can tell what a conscience will do to a man. It can even destroy him. Yeah, and a case. <laughs> I think I'll call Hendricks and have him take me off the case. Let's see if I get a couple of weeks into Mexico before the summer's over. You might as well, before you're too old to cross the border. As of now, we're nowhere. That's what Ruth and I need. New places, new faces. Well, Joe, don't say it hasn't been fun. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just one big party. Bring me back some jumping beans. <laughs> I'll do that. So Hello, Armstrong. Just a minute, Charlie. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. That was the DA's office. What do they have to say? From now on, we play it my old man's way. From here in, we're dealing with people. What do you mean by that? We've got Mr. Big, old Doc Sloan. He panicked during a routine customs inspection at Tijuana this morning. Tried to drive through the barrier. They shot him. And? He's dead. Was there anyone with him? Yeah. The woman. But she got away. They found $200,000 on him. She must have the rest. Well, Charlie, looks like you're going to Mexico after all. You have another way I'd plan. Look, uh, why don't you call Hendricks before we leave? Once we get the woman, you've recovered the bulk of the money. Your job's over. So? So you and Ruth could take off from Tijuana. Not a bad idea. She could pack and meet me down there Saturday. Even if we don't pick up the woman right away, it'll give you and Ruth a chance to brush up on your Spanish. <laughs> and that's not counting the money. What money? Well, the uh, money you'd save on plane tickets. No tax in Mexico. You'd save 60 bucks. Oh, sure. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Every little bit helps, Charlie. Good idea. I think I'll call Hendricks. He'll probably go for it. Right, you do that. Then go home and pack a clean shirt. I'll pick you up in a couple of hours, huh? You should have let me pack. I could have kept all the creases in the right places. Uh, you'll have enough to do. Anything special you want me to bring down, like your fishing gear? I won't be doing any fishing, Ruby. Well, you can if you want to. 
Oh, I'll have plenty to do. Oh, by the way, there's a dispatch case in the back of the car, some stuff in the office. Just throw it in with the rest of the bags, will you? From the office? Yeah, some annual reports. I promised Hendricks I'd finish them up in Mexico. It'll only take me a day or so. Well, he's got his nerve. Well, the important thing is he's letting us go. Sorry you're getting stuck with the packing. No, I don't mind. It'll be fun now that we're really going. You just throw everything in the car. I'll meet you at the border on Saturday. Oh, it's Joe. Goodbye, Ruthie. Charlie, aren't you going to kiss me? Sure. Goodbye, Ruthie. Here, here, and here. The road south to Rosarito Beach. The road to Tecate. They're all covered. We have hopes. You won't have any trouble. She's got $200,000 on her, and she's a blonde. The money may help. She could show it to the wrong person. But I'm not sure about the blonde. He was shot before dawn. It was still dark. But when the woman ran away, one of the inspectors got a look at her. He couldn't tell much, but he was sure she was not a blonde. All of our witnesses said blonde. They saw in a lighted corridor, not on a dark street. <laughs> well, she could have used dye. Still doesn't mean her hair was brown. He didn't say she had brown hair, Senor Norman. He merely said she wasn't blonde. Well, what difference does it make? We still don't know what she looks like. All we know is that she's a woman. Blonde, brown, red or green hair. Just a woman. True, but she's a woman on the run. There's no place she could go without attracting some attention. I'm for a shower and a thick stink. How about you? I thought I'd stop by the airport and check on those tickets. Okay, I'll see you later. Might even buy you a beer if the swindle sheet can stand it. It's a deal, Joe. Let me drop you by the hotel? No, no, don't bother. The town's full of cats. Hey, don't smash up Lieutenant Castro's car. Good little angler with pretty brown eyes and lots of American dollars. Where's Bobby? Didn't you hear the motor? He's not in. Dance with me. Where is he? Dance with me. 
You dance with me, I'll tell you. No, I, uh, I think I'll sit this one out. With Bobbick in his office. With Bobby in his office. Looking for a woman, Bobbick. So few women in Tijuana, you must look for one in my office. Get out. This is a particular kind of a woman, Bobbick. <laughs> what kind of woman is that? The kind that Al Wolf would have brought you. The kind that needed help, like Lombard needed help. Only he doesn't need it anymore. Lombard. On 14 Calle Rosarita del Flores, Tijuana. About that woman, Bobby. Hard. I've known about you and Al Wolf for a long time, playing your high class wet back game. A lot of people could use a passport away out of the country. Life can be cruel, Bobby. But it paid. It bought Wolf an airport and you a club. You're crazy. I haven't got much time. Where's the woman? Are you police? I wouldn't be playing around if I were. Where is she, Bobby? I'll take you to her. First, I make a phone call. You're not very bright, Bobbick. Very well. She's here, safe. Her husband arranged for two Argentine passports. After the border of Viasco, I took her in. You still have the passports? <laughs> yes. They are beautiful. And the way out of Mexico? Also beautiful. But it will cost money. How much? $20,000. But it is foolproof. I'd send my own mother that way. You probably have. I'll be using those passports. You? For yourself? I want them tomorrow night. Money? Half tomorrow night. Half when you get us into Buenos Aires. Don't argue, Bobby. I'm not in the mood. Now take me to her. Money gave him a feeling of power, dreams of a new life. Me. But he didn't make it. But we will, Linda. Everything will be all right. My share of the money will be handed to me tomorrow. In 24 hours, we'll be halfway to Argentina. I was just going to look for you. Oh, what's up? We just got a call from Cabot. Leighton Prince. We've got an ID on Sloan. Oh. Old Doc Sloan. His real name was Paul Bruckner. Lived in San Francisco. Married to a Mexican girl named Linda. He was legitimate, too. Until he was kicked out from malpractice. You're creeping up on him. 
Once you've got a man's right name, he quits being a shadow. What's the next step? We dig into Bruckner's life in San Francisco. What tonsils he took out, what babies he delivered, how he lost his license. I ask coffee, Joe? Me? No, thanks. I'm stimulated enough. Besides, I had to drink your beer, too, last night. Last night? I, I went right to my room. So I better get going. I've got to meet Ruth at the border. When does she do? Five o'clock. I'll go with you. That's all right, Joe. I can manage. Thanks. Sure you can. But I don't want to miss seeing Ruth's face when she finally gets to Mexico. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> looks like you're going away for ten years. Yes, it looks like it, doesn't it? Shall we unpack now? No, I ain't one of them will be after dinner. Whenever you say, Charlie, I'm tired. Very tired. Yeah. Why don't you take a nap for an hour or so? Well, what'll you be doing? Why? Oh, thought I'd go over these annual reports. Why? I thought you deserved that job for Mexico City. Changed my mind. I think I'll do it now. I was going to surprise you, take along your fishing gear, put it in there. So I had a key made and I opened the case. It was to be a surprise, a, a joke, something to laugh about. What do you do with the money? I mailed it to Mr. Hendricks. No return address. Fool. You crazy fool! Do you know what you've done, do you? Charlie. Why'd you do it? Why? Why? What does it matter? I killed a man to protect that money. Then you'll have to kill me, won't you, Charlie? What do you want from me? A few hours. Just a few hours. I was willing to give you my whole life. What's the few hours? Charlie, don't turn away from me. Let me touch you. Let me talk to you. There's so much to say. Please, at least tell me what we were going to do. We weren't going to do anything. I was going to leave you. But I loved you, Charlie. Wasn't that enough? Once it was. Where did I fail you? People change, Ruth. Oh, Charlie. We had so much, Charlie. Why? Why? A house becomes a prison, a job, a trap. What did you want? A new kind of life, the kind that $200,000 could have bought me. Alone? Can't 
have that now. No, you fix that. Charlie, if you went to them, if, if you said I did it, I'm sorry you're getting the money back. Charlie, I'd, I'd wait. I have the strength. I have the patience. I'd wait no matter how long. There isn't time enough in all eternity, Ruth. I killed a man. You couldn't wait for me. Alone. And goodbye. Goodbye, Charlie. Hey, Charlie, wait a minute. We got some more on Bruckner. Lieutenant Castro checked it for me. A hunch, but he paid off. Bruckner was married here in Tijuana seven years ago to a singer in a club named uh, Linda Alvarez. Where was that club? In Agua Caliente, but they went out of business. Did she uh, sing any place else? Perhaps. It won't take long to find out. There are a few secrets in Tijuana. Well, I've got to go. I've got to get some things for Ruth. No. No. Not until you have a drink with me. Or did you have too much to drink last night? One of my men saw the car parked right next to Bobbix last night. Police cars attract an awful lot of attention in that district. I stopped for a drink on my way back from the airport. It wasn't the drink you stopped for. You probably heard about the dancer they have there. She's pretty nice, huh? Yeah. Yeah, she's right. I, I've got to run. I'll see you later. A very impatient man. Bob, it's just hardly the place for a tourist. Or is your friend trying to combine business with pleasure? Maybe. Who is it? It's Joe, Ruth. Can I come in? Oh, wait a minute. Anything wrong? No, no, of course not. Why? Oh, I don't know. You and Charlie, you both seem a bit edgy. Sure, everything's all right. I just told you, everything is fine. Why shouldn't it be? Ruth, I've known you a long time. You don't lie very well. What do you mean? Is Charlie in any trouble? Why don't you stop being a cop? You make a case out of everything. Ruth, you're making one out of this. Well, there's no trouble. Unless a few words between husband and wife. Sometimes Charlie flies off. We just had a little argument, that's all. <laughs> How can anybody argue with you? Or maybe I'm just prejudiced. Who knows better than you? Charlie's been under a lot of strain. Sure, every case is an ulcer. But in this one, the way our Charlie's been riding himself. Maybe it interfered with his holiday. He promised it to himself and to me. A real fiesta. The way a kid looks forward to a birthday party. He's just overworked. He's been edgy for months. Ever since Hendrix sent him up to San Francisco. Well, I hadn't read them. I expected to on the plane. It's a long trip to Mexico City. Yeah. Long trip. All 
of six hours. Enough reading for a year. Operator, I want to speak to Mr. Sam Hendricks, Victoria Nyan, four nine o one, Burbank, California. That's right. All right away. Good. Hello, Hendricks, Armstrong. Yeah, from Tijuana. Oh, fine, fine. Look, Hendricks, uh, Charlie was on a case several months ago up in San Francisco. Can you give me any dope on it? I'll, uh, I'll explain later. Yes, I'll wait. You know, people on the plane are choosy. They like to read things that are bright. Take their mind off the possibility of a crash. I'll repeat that. A phony accident claim. Eight months ago, huh? Yeah. A doctor? Who? Dr. Paul Bruckner. Uh... Thank you. Take their mind off. Crash. <laughs> Sorry, Ruth. It was all planned. I changed my mind. I don't want to go to Buenos Aires direct. I want to go to Acapulco by boat. I'll pay you more for the passports. How much more? Five thousand. Bueno. Twenty-five thousand dollars, payable now. You get everything. Passports, birth certificates, everything. What about passage south? See Alfredo Rodriguez, Casa del Norte, Rosarita Beach. You tell him Bobby sent him a fisherman. You will understand. What will he charge? What does it matter? A few hundred dollars, maybe five, six hundred, who knows? It is cheap. Now, you got the money? If you've got the passports. <laughs> I'll tell you, you tell me. Children. Money. Leave the money, Pollock. Da la vuelta a la manzana y ciérrales el paso. Y llama a la jefatura que traigan más coches.
el fuego por la gente. Síganlo. Cubre esa puerta de allá. Tú esa y tú cubre la puerta de atrás. This wasn't on the timetable either. They, 